Hello, welcome to the show. Um, I am your host, Cole Young. Thank you again. If this is your first time, welcome. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell to stay up to date. We got a very, very special guest. Um, not only is this dude a former teammate of mine, he is also a back-to-back Pac-12 championship, and he is also a Rose Bowl winner. And he just recently signed to come out of retirement to the Germany Football League to the Munich Cowboys. Let's give a warm welcome to Lucas Nolan. What's up, Bear? Thanks for having me. Oh yeah, no, thank you for thank you for being on here. How are you today? Let's let's start off with that. I'm doing good. Just, uh... Good taking it easy getting some stuff done so nothing nothing special yeah okay so you it's interesting your story is very interesting but i think it would be interesting for the audience to know so they can give somewhat of a quick background so explain your story tell tell us how you got here to going to play again yeah this is the whole entire spiel from how you got into football all the way up to right now um, okay, so quick recap, I guess. I started playing football when I was young, you know, like a lot of us, uh, fourth grade. I uh, loved it, played all the way up through, you know, elementary school, middle school, high school. Um, to Had to take a year off my freshman year. I had, had to have a knee surgery, but kept playing and then was fortunate enough coming out of school to uh, have a chance to go play in college. And I was trying to, you know, decide if I wanted to go um, – you know, like the D3 route or D2 route was kind of mostly what I was the interest I had, but I was fortunate enough to uh, be given the chance to walk on at Oregon, which as a kid from Oregon was a dream come true. Um, And so I took that, had a great four years at Oregon, um, you know, had a good time playing, good time, um, good time on the team, but most importantly, you know, meeting a lot of good friends and good people. And, uh, and then when I graduated two years ago, um, I thought, you know, I was probably going to be done. Um, but after uh, kind of working the last 18 months and, and having a job and kind of set, settling into life after sports, I, I kind of got the urge to um, try and play again. And and fortunately, um, football in Europe is they're trying to grow it. And there's a lot of uh, semi-professional and kind of startup leagues and and I was able to get in contact with a team over there and uh, and so my body's healthy and I'm gonna go try and play a little bit more football see how it goes so I'm excited that's awesome that's awesome and so um going from that transition from Oregon to the um, becoming a coach you were a high school coach at Tualatin if people don't know and which is a high which is high school at his hometown um How was that um, transition? Can you explain to us, like, what were, like, some feelings that you were going through with this? Um, Coach and I loved it. I I always knew I wanted to coach. Um, Part of the reason I wanted to go to Oregon was to see if if getting into college coaching was a career I wanted. Um, Mm -hmm. So I knew when I was done that I was going to want to get into coaching, whatever level that was. Um, and my youngest brother was also a high schooler at the time. And, and I thought it would be a super cool experience to um, help out while he was there and be able to share that with him. So so I got into coaching right when we when I finished up at Oregon, I coached the last two years at the high school I went to, Twalton, um, and coached the safeties, DBs there. And I loved it. You know, it's it's different than playing, obviously. Um, but I think that high school football is a, is a great level. It's, it's still super competitive, but unlike, you know, college and professional, it's still kind of about like development of, of kids and, 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 you know, turning them into good people. And, and, uh, it's not all about the wins and losses. So I think it's, it's a great level and, and I really enjoyed coaching and I'm going to miss that a lot because I won't be doing it this fall. So what is the difference between um, college and high school? You meant you mentioned that. So, like going into it and like knowing like the audience, like like what are your what are some like keys or takeaways that you took of like saying, oh, this is different from high school compared to college and vice versa. I mean, I think in college, you know, it, it's getting even more so professional with NIL, which I think is great for for players and they deserve it. But um, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's a business. It's a business that pays coaches a lot of money and you know, pay schools a lot of money. And, um, you know, when I, when I first started, obviously people were there just on scholarship, which alone is worth a lot of money. And now NIL mm-hmm. as well. And, and it's just, you know, wins, wins and losses matter. I mean, coaches lose their jobs, uh, families have to move and, uh, you know, it's, it's mentally and 
physically taxing on both players and coaches. And I think high school ball is too, but I also think that, you know, uh, wins and losses aren't number one, unless you're, you know, you're coaching at a school like modern day or St. John mm-hmm. Bosco or, yeah. or, 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 you know, IMG, something like that. But, but it's about, you know, like I said, kind of developing the kids into, into good members of the community and, and hopefully giving them something that provides an outlet um, from other things going on in their life. And, you know, just, just have a great time and, and hopefully win a lot of games. We are fortunate enough the last two years at Twalton to make it to the state semis and then the state title, which we unfortunately lost. But, but um, you know, you still want to compete at a high level, but you want to do a lot of other things besides just win games, which I think just kind of makes it a, a pure version of the, of the sport, you know. That, that's awesome. And you mentioned now going into Munich. I know you're not there currently right now, but you had that spark to come back. Can you explain more of why you want to come back as a player? Um, yeah. So, and I guess backtrack a little bit. When I got, when I was finishing up at, at um, Oregon, um, I kind of had my exit interview. You know, a lot of our coaches that we had my senior year were, were on their way to other places. Mm-hmm. Um, Coach Chris will get the job at Miami and stuff like that. So my, I had an exit interview with uh, Matt Neuer, shout out Matt Neuer. Um, and, yes. and, you know, we just talked about, you know, my last four years and stuff like that. And then he had mentioned to me um, if I'd have any interest to go play some more in, in Europe because because he knew of a coach over there um, that used to coach at Oregon a long time ago, was retired then and, and kind of traveling and coaching. And if I'd have any interest in that. And I never thought about it, never even knew football in Europe was really a thing. Um, and, and it kind of sparked an interest, um, you know, because I was a walk on and I was fortunate enough to play a little bit on on defense and, and get a get a good amount of time on special teams. But I never played a ton and I kind of wanted to try and, you know, play a little bit a little bit more. But um, just the timing didn't really work out. I, I had to graduate and the season starts before uh, we finished up school. So kind of just put it aside and and uh, thought I would start coaching and, and working. Um, and, you know, I like I said, I love the coaching um working I would that took a long time to get used to you know just just playing sports your whole life go to getting a job so um just just still kind of was working out pretty hard and and thought you know in the back of my head maybe I'd try and do it before too many years had passed and I definitely wasn't in good enough shape anymore to to play again um and and so I kind of just decided at the new year this this past year that I was gonna pursue it fully and see if anything worked out and and um you know, got in contact with a couple teams in Europe and, and, and uh, fortunately was able to get to know the coach of this Munich Cowboys team I'm going to go play for. And, um, and they wanted to bring me on and, and I'm super excited about that. Like I said, I feel healthy, um, you know, didn't take a ton of hits in, in college and, and, you know, just see what I got in the tank and, and also just great life experience to go live in another country for a while. That's good. Yeah. Did you have to do like a tryout or I know you like you talk to the coaches, but did you have to yeah. do a physical tryout and all that? No, I didn't do it. No, I mean, you know, I, you know, being in Oregon and them in Germany, that was going to be a little difficult. I did have um, kind of a, a film clip that I had put together from Oregon because okay. um, I like I said, I kind of knew maybe I was going to look into this. And so um, I have like a I had, I had created like a five or six minute uh, thing of film from um some special teams clips, couple couple defensive clips, and then a lot of practice clips, just kind of, you know, like film does, trying to showcase what I could do, and um, and I got that to them, and and they um they liked it, and you know, fortunately, the Oregon football brand kind of has a, you know, a, a pre- it's a it's a big brand, and they they knew what Oregon football was, and and um you know, we're excited to to have me come out and join the team, and 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 I'm excited to do that, so. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Yep, yeah, I agree too. With Oregon having a big brand, it can help a lot of people for sure. Um, so you talk about too with the GFL. What is the difference between the GFL and like the NFL compared to those? Like, can you explain a little more what the Germany Football League is and like what is your? I know you're not there yet, but like, what have they told you? Like, like how our practice is going to be and it's talking about semi-professional. Can you explain a little more about that? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's very different from, from, you know, NFL, uh, college football. Um, I know you had Marco on and I didn't, Mm -hmm. I didn't have a chance to listen to that full, uh, thing yet, but, but the ELF, the one he's going to play in is kind of the, um, 
kind of the biggest league, I guess I would say in Europe right now, the one that they're really trying to grow and almost turn into like the, a, prof- a real professional league over there. Um, you know, yeah. more money into it, more, more bigger, um, bigger paychecks and, and more marketing and social media and all that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of like the biggest league over there right now. Uh-huh. And then, um, and then the one I'm going to play in the German football, and that's also kind of a national across Europe. I mean, they have a lot of teams in Germany, but they have a team in, in I think Poland. They have a team in Barcelona, a team in France, a team in Prague. So they're they're all over over there. Um, and then the team, the the one that I'm going to go play in the the GFL, the German Football League, is is just teams in Germany, um, and and it's it's very competitive from my understanding, um, but it's different. You know, I mean, it's not football. American football is not a sport that Europeans for the most part grow up playing um I I think from the people I've talked to the the talent is is very um you know you'll have some guys on the team that are freak athletes um but haven't really played any football and then you'll have you know some guys that that are really just kind of learning so so that'll be interesting for me to see um because like I said I just think that it's it's a wide range of guys that you get some guys that really know what's going on and some guys that are learning and that's excuse me, kind of part of the uh, job of the American players they bring in is to is to kind of help teach those guys. Um, you know, you only get four Americans on a team in the GFL. So you can't you can't load a, a roster up with, with, you know, with ex college players or anything like that. So um, that also made it harder to find a team because, um, you know, the, the teams want to really try and get a, the best the best Americans they can because you only get a couple you get two on offense and two on defense at a, t- at a time. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's just, it's a wide variety of talent is my understanding and, Mm -hmm. and, and it's semi-professional. I mean, you know, we, we, we practice, I think two or three times a week and a lot of the guys are either in school still or have jobs. And so it's, I mean, it's truly semi-pro and, and it'll be interesting for sure. So would you, would you get a job as well, or would you want it to be just fully professional? Um, over there. Yeah. Over, overseas. Yes. Yeah, no, it's for me, it'll be, um, uh, you know, I guess professional, but, um, and, and, you know, like I said, I mean, the American players, you only get a couple of them. You expect, you expect them, a lot of them. Um, but for me, it'll be professional, I guess, you know, um, I won't be working other, other than that. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be practicing and working out and just trying to stay in the best shape I can and playing and, and, um, um, I won't be doing anything else besides football, but I'll, I'll have time to travel a lot and, and, you know, like I said, it is semi-pro, so it's not a, a day-to-day long, you know, eight-hour grind. Um, I think that's one of the really cool parts about it, especially for somebody like me who hasn't played in a couple of years. I, you know, we'll, we'll see how my body does, um, is is it's a great chance to travel and to experience new culture and and see Europe and see Germany and and really do some cool stuff before, you know, got to gotta settle down, so... Yeah. Um, what are your expectations going into it? You kind of mentioned how the Americans, there's only two per side and they expect a lot of them, but what do you expect out of going to into this personally? Um, you know, I, I haven't really, it's a good question. I haven't really written down or, or specifically thought of anything. I mean, obviously I want to go over there and, and be on the field a ton. Um, I want to be a good player and, uh, make a lot of plays and and but I want to be a, a great teammate and hopefully um, help you know teach teach the players there a lot and I want to uh, get along with them good I want the the German guys to take me in and and you know us all get along and hang out and go do stuff and, and then kind of show me around their city um, but you know like I said I at Oregon great experience had an awesome time um, I was never a defensive starter or anything like that you know if you look at my stats you're not going to find a ton but but um, I want to go over there and, and kind of prove to myself that, that I learned a lot at Oregon and that I still got it and, and I'm still a good football player. So, Amen. I think that a lot of those walk-ons at Oregon, they, they always want to prove themselves for sure. So I get that. I get that for sure. And last question, um, what is some advice? Um, I know there's people that are looking to you and me of the saying, look, I want to get to where we're at, where we're student athletes, division one, or we have opportunities to go play professionally. What is some advice that you would say, especially you, I feel like you've taken a very different route from many people. And I, I actually, I commend you for it because you, 
never know. And it just shows the definition of not giving up. So what are some, what would be some like nuggets or some tad bit of advice you would give to the next generation? Um, I mean, as somebody who has been done and is going to go back to play some more, I think it's, uh, you know, easy to get caught up in the day-to-day grind and not appreciate it. And I would say to appreciate it more because as I experienced firsthand, you get done playing and you're just kind of like, dang, like, you know, it's tough to get up early and go to practice and be in the cold or the rain or getting beat up, but, but it is a great time. And, and I think, you know, I wish I had approached it with a better attitude and more appreciation. Um, so that's kind of one thing. And, and, you know, number two, I think, uh, you know, kind of like you said, just, just keep, keep pressing on because you never know when your break will come. And, and, you know, there was times for me at Oregon that were tough and, and, and kept pressing on and I'm glad I did and I had a great time and, um, you know, going to go do this now too. And, and football's done a lot for me and I'm excited to play a little bit more. So. No, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, no, Lucas will be, me and my audience will be rooting for you for so for for sure in Germany and Munich. I mean, that is awesome. Again, congratulations on a great experience. I mean, a great opportunity. I mean, it's an awesome one. And yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited. Maybe I might have to come down to Germany then. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. You you have to come uh come visit me and Marco, or maybe maybe the yes. two of us can can do a, a joint uh joint follow-up interview with you while we're there or something like that. Yes, so. for sure. Ladies and gentlemen. The Munich's Cowboy Safety himself, <laughs> Lucas Nolan. Have a great day, everyone, and stay smooth. See you, Bear.